Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and if you've ever wanted to create grids that are not equal, then I'm about to show you how to, and we can use these anywhere, use them in video and After Effects. I'm gonna show you how to create logarithmic grids inside Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so first of all, if you're creating any kind of equal value grids in Premiere Pro or After Effects, they're built in. You don't need Illustrator for that. But if you need uh, a gradient, so it's, it's going from one value to another but not equal, then Illustrator can do that really easy. And I'll show you how to bring it into a lower third. Let's go have a look. So I'll start by creating a new document. This is the most important one right here. Even though video is 72 pixels per inch, start with your Illustrator file at 300 or else it won't work as well. It's not gonna look as good. Plus keep this at RGB. RGB 300, the rest you can leave whatever you want. I've got a, a 1920 by 1080 uh, HD frame, but you can go up to almost 20 feet uh, in Illustrator. So once we have Illustrator open, in the tools on the left-hand side, if you click and hold, you'll see two kinds of grids. I'm gonna show you the polar grid in a second, but this is the rectangular grid tool. If you click, you get a dialog box to create a grid and you click OK, it's gonna make that grid. If you click and drag, then you'll make a grid that size with that many steps in it. If you click and drag and hold the mouse, so I'm continuing to hold the mouse, tap the up arrow on your keyboard, you're adding and removing rows. So that's up and down, left and right, we'll add and remove columns, okay? So we've got this kind of thing going here. Let's make uh, less of these and more of those. So now I have that kind of a grid, but if I want to create a logarithmic grid, if I tap the X key on the left, see it, it pushes them toward the left. If I tap the C key, which is beside the X key, they go to the right, so left and right, and I can go back to equal amounts. So that's how to do it left and right. Up and down is the F key, and we need more. Uh, so I'll add more of those. Again, that's the up key. So there's the F key and the V key. They're above each other. So I can create gradients, logarithmic grid values like that. So let me take this down and take this one up and tap my C key. just a little bit, just to get it like that. Now, once you do that once, if you just click with the grid tool, you'll see those values in there. So if you're not really sure what that logarithmic setting is, what I just did was 20%. You notice that the, and the, and Illustrator calls this the skew value. So you can create this uh, without having to use the keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to create something 1300 pixels by 200 pixels because I've got a lower third based on that size and three dividers, 27 of these dividers and I want it skewed by 20%. The outside uh, rectangle as a frame simply means that it creates another uh, vector object on the outside as a frame and I can tell it to fill the grid if I want. I don't want that, click OK and you can see it made that for me perfectly. Now behind here is a bunch of white but if you turn off show transparency grid, if you turn off the white this is not really white you are actually exporting out nothing. It's just uh, Illustrator will show you white because most people aren't used to working with a transparent background. But rest assured, anything you draw inside Illustrator is going to be transparent unless it's a solid. If I filled this in with color, then obviously it's going to fill that in and not be transparent. So here's another useful tip. If you select your artwork and go down here to the artwork artboard tool, and click here, you can fit to selected art. So even though we created an HD frame, 
all I really want is to export out this logarithmic grid to use in a lower third somewhere else. And I don't want a giant HD frame or a letter size frame or something like that. So we'll save this as a native Illustrator file. So save. I'll write over top of the grid that I have. And for this dialog box, this is simply the latest version of Illustrator. Click OK. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's jump over to Premiere Pro. And I've got a title. And if you just right click anywhere in this area and choose graphic, insert graphic, I'll grab the same grid, drag it over top, and drop it in place. Now I've got this logarithmic grid. Now what you, you can't easily do is if things didn't really line up, you notice how the, the E is on that line. You know, maybe I might want to move that over. If we go back to Illustrator, this, this setting here is not connected to the grid. So I can't update the grid that's here. I'll just make a new grid. So the grid creation tool is strictly there to make the grid pieces. What you can do is go to the object and expand it all. And now it's a bunch of separate pieces. If we have to go back and ungroup it all, and sometimes you have to ungroup several times. No, we're okay now. So what I could do is I could now grab each one of these and move it over so I could place that over there. So if I want to change this, you know, let's say that I, I grab a rectangle and place that in the background. And I'll send that to the back. If I save this, click on it and load it again. So this button here, if I click and load the grid, it doesn't change. If you want to update it, I'm going to save as grid number two. OK. Go back to the title designer and it updates and I'll just send that to the back. So the updating is, is really not um, that great. You do have to, to re-import this in and the title designer isn't the best in remembering this. So um, you might have to create a, a new version in. Now, I sh I, there was another grid in there which was the polar coordinate. So let me create a new document. So that was a rectangular grid tool. This is the polar grid tool. Click and drag out. And if you hold the shift key down, you'll constrain this to a perfect circle. The up arrows are gonna increase the inside uh, rings, the outside, the left and right arrow, arrow, left and right arrows create more of these. And just like before, here's the X key. Now let me, and the C key. And I'm adding more up and down. Let's do less of these. So this is the X key. And now I'm going the other way, the C key going the other way, the F key and the V key. And if we added more of those, you can see there's F and there's V. So I think it makes less sense to make those look logarithmic and it makes more sense to create those kinds of polar coordinates. So. Don't discount Illustrator as being the tool that you never open up. If you ever wanted to create a logarithmic kind of a grid like this, boom, you're done. It's a little bit smarter and easier in After Effects. The updating problems that I was having in the title designer in uh, Premiere Pro is just because the title designer doesn't work really well with imported graphics. Uh, After Effects 
you just drop in one of those and any changes you make to Illustrator and re redrawing that grid uh, will update right in, inside After Effects. All right, so there, now you know how to make really cool logarithmic grids inside Illustrator that you could use in any of your designs, any of your motion graphics, lower thirds, anything you want. All right. Thanks to everyone for your wonderful support here at Video Revealed. If you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and uh, subscribe to us. Uh, if you want to take your, your support up to the next level, then you know what? Support us over on uh, Patreon for as little as $1 a month would make a huge difference to you. Did you notice I wore my grid shirt for my grid uh, tutorial? Well, hopefully you did. <laughs> anyway, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.